Hi there. Uh, my magazine isn't uh, an educational magazine in the same sense as what we're talking about today, but uh, it's one of my favorite magazines and my most collaborative magazine, so I just felt like it would be a really good example to sort of show you how uh, I've built this magazine and pulled together my collaborators and really fostered this collaboration. Before I uh, launch my deck, I just wanted to show you quickly on here, if you want to add somebody to a magazine, it's really simple. On the front cover, there's like a little dotted circle right here uh, with a pretend person and a, a plus sign. And basically, you click on that, and then you can email uh, directly from there. It'll launch your email program. Uh, so you can directly invite them from there. So all you need is their email address that is connected to their uh, Flipboard account. OK. so. Uh, five ways to foster collaboration on group magazines. Wait a minute, I just realized I was not screen sharing, was I? <laughs> User error. There we go. Sorry. And here we go into the tunnel. So this is the aforementioned uh, little area where you can invite other people. So I already described it, so there you go. Okay, um, five ways to foster collaboration in group magazines. The first thing that is really vital, and it doesn't really sort of seem like it, it matters in terms of collaboration, but it really does, and this is choosing your topic wisely. You really need to choose a topic that, um, that really can create a collaborative community around it. Um, is it well defined? Uh, this this needs to be uh, really a topic that's that's specific. It can it doesn't have to be on a very 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 specific event. But here, like online civility, can sound like a very broad topic, but with the sec with the tagline on it, we need to do more than just talk about how civility is lacking online. We need to start talking about solutions. So that immediately puts everyone in the mindset that this magazine is going to talk about the problems in civility online and the lack thereof, uh, but also is not going to just talk about the problems, but also um, share solutions. Um, it's, it's a work in progress, and like with anything, I think sometimes we still end up having a little bit more of the, uh, the problems and the solutions, but I think that's, that's probably sadly typical. But going into it, it was something that was very important to the group of us that we wouldn't just be creating a topic, a, a magazine about the problem. And so that enabled us to really start thinking about it in a very different way. Uh, so that's that's what I mean about uh, something being well defined. Are there compelling visuals available online? This is really important, and I know uh, Marcel and Linda have shown lots of great resources and tips and tricks. But some topics, honestly, are more visual than others, uh, and Flipboard really works the best, and you get really excited about it more the more attractive it is. So you want to sort of research the topic somewhat and see if there are uh, if there are a lot of places where you can find really attractive images and is this a topic that you actually care about you as the magazine owner now obviously when you're talking about in an educational environment uh, the the topics aren't necessarily always going to be a you know, have a passion about. However, like any project in school, you're going to have more of an opportunity to get the students involved in the project if it is a topic that they that they care about in some way or that they're interested in in some way. So it really, you know, when you're thinking about, you know, how am I going to have this topic that uh, that is going to, you know, keep my Collaborate, co-collaborators uh, flipping, you know, is it a topic you care about? Because it's very, very hard to lead a project 
that that is on a topic you do not care about and similarly that your collaborators don't care about so those are really the things I think about uh, when I create a collaborative magazine um, I have been involved in some other uh, collaborative magazines and I've noticed that my participation wanes pretty quickly if it's not a topic I truly care about in fact my own use of Flipboard skyrocketed once I started thinking more about what topics I was going to curate. I think my very first magazine was was about Arizona where I used to live and I love Arizona, I love visiting there, but I just didn't care enough about it to, you know, to curate a whole magazine on it. So I kind of languished and once I started thinking about the topics that uh, I was really passionate about, like uh, my dog, who is a Siberian Husky, like uh, uh, women in leadership roles and in technology, uh, and I also have a magazine on Generation X. Uh, I really, I started viewing the web through the lens actually of Flipboard and thinking, oh wow, that would be great for my Flipboard magazine. So when you, when you're really, it's a topic that you care about and that you come across a lot, it really makes it a lot easier to collaborate. Which brings me to my second point. These are my co-conspirators on my online civility magazine. And I really, these are, these are women I, I know very well and I know their interests and I know their passion for this topic. So we were all talking and, you know, like, what can we do? We wanted to do something uh, somehow address this topic of online civility because it's something that we were all having conversations about with each other and with other people and we I, I think originally like Shireen and I were talking about it and then Mickey brought it up and then I was having conversations with Tinu and Cami and it really made so much sense and then these people also their background and their passion for the topic really made it important and these are all their flipboard handles on there. Shereen Mitchell is a technologist, uh, a thought leader around issues of diversity in tech and politics and is also founder of the Stop Online w Violence Against Women uh, and that obviously her passion for the topic and her experience in the online field. She's been online and she was designing BBS boards back in the 80s and 90s. She was a, you know, a perfect co-conspirator on this. Tinu has been writing on the web since 1998. She's built multiple communities for women online. She has a lot of experience in the topic and the issue. Mickey has spent her career in the nonprofit sector, particularly uh, in areas around volunteerism. So even though it wasn't online, it was still very much about community and people helping other people. And Cami is a peer and social media pro and also a member of the board of directors of Civilian Nation, which is a nonprofit organization that uh, is geared toward having you know more civility online and and creating a civil discourse so we thought about it we thought about other people we knew who might be uh, you know good contributors to the magazine but we decided that we would start with just us because we knew that we could together build something and on top of it none of these women were very active in Flipboard. All of them uh, had Flipboard accounts, but they, you know, and they occasionally used it as a reader as it was initially, but none of them was using Flipboard regularly. Uh, they wondered if it would be a concern. I said, well, look, you know, I'm here. I can help you. I'm like, you guys are smart. You can, I know you can figure Flipboard out. It's, it's very simple once you get into it. But you know, you also have me, so you have any questions, just ask me. And at the beginning, some of them had questions about different things and about why things would flip in certain ways and wouldn't in others. And by being uh, very hands off and not you know, standing over them, but in just sort of helping them in any way get used to the platform, 
they very quickly picked it up and uh, are really, all of, all of them are using Flipboard tremendously now. And some of them, uh, Cami, for example, actually uh, is using uh, Flipboard on some of her client projects now to track their PR mentions. So it's, it's a way that, you know, I, I chose people who I knew would understand the platform and were, were really uh, passionate about the topic. Uh, it's very important to, uh, you know, sp split the work. Now, in some cases, and, and also I, I want to just um, mention one thing here, because the strawberry Pop-Tart pie looks really out of place in comparison uh, with the rest of the topics, but I promise you the article that's there is actually completely on target. So, And also the strawberry Pop-Tart pie looks really good. Anyway, so... As you can see here, we're all curating different types of things, different types of topics, and there, there are different types of resources. Now, we didn't initially really talk that much about how we were going to do this, and I figured that I would be doing a lot of um, deleting repeated articles, that kind of thing. But what we've done is, we've paid attention uh, to each other's social feeds and we all have a lot of different sources that we view all the time a lot of different areas of interest where we're already curating information on various topics so we what we've done is we basically are paying attention to what each other is doing and is curating in these other places in addition to Flipboard, so we when we're on the go and we're we're uh, flipping and we're using the bookmarklet, we don't have to go back and forth between the magazine and the and the uh, website that we're on to see if an article is already in there. I think maybe about two times I've had to delete an article, but because we have different topics and uh, different. Uh, areas of interest in this overall topic that really automatically split the work very naturally. I would say in another type of magazine, you really want to have a conversation. Maybe you want to split it by, uh, by source, by social platform. Maybe you want to have an extra magazine that's a staging magazine and you reflip everything into something. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. Uh, but I would really have a conversation. Maybe if it's a broader topic you're doing, uh, I'll just say, you know, for example, the American Revolution, you could have one person be curating information about the British side and one person curating information about uh, the Continental Congress and someone else about uh, Europe and someone else about the uh, about the military in the fledgling United States. So you can sort of split it up that way because you'll end up with the best magazine if everybody isn't just flipping from the same sources, but you're giving everybody an equal chance to participate. So it's really a good idea to uh, think about who these people are and what their strengths are, and it enables you to really split the work uh, in a much more equitable way. Supporting your team. And this is really important. Now, in a case like this, we're all on social media a lot, on, uh, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Flipboard. And so whenever I share the magazine, I, in, I make sure that I am crediting my fellow magazine makers. So it is very important if you're sharing a magazine, if you're having your students share a magazine that they're working on, or you're the teacher and you're sharing a magazine for all your, you know, that your students are, are contributing to, to give that credit and to support them and show that, you know, it really shows that you care about their contributions to this. Uh, you know, it, I, I can't say enough about how important really that is because when people see that what they're doing is appreciated and this is goes for real life as well as not that 
sorry, not that education is a real life, but school school life and and outside of school life, it it really makes people feel like they are truly continu uh, contributing to uh, something a lot more tangible when they are are being supported in their participation. Uh, in in addition, that kind of support I referenced earlier, such as answering questions and making sure that there aren't multiple copies of the same articles. When, when we do have occasions and there are multiple copies of the same article, if I am one of the people who, uh, who flipped one of the magazines, I delete mine. Uh, unless it already has reflips or comments and the other one doesn't. Uh, if one has, if, if they both have some reflips, uh, then I just delete mine. Um, if if uh, neither one does, then I'll, I'll delete mine. And that's because I, I'm on Flipboard so much that I am participating a lot. I, I have a tremendous amount in the magazine. And to me, it's more important that everybody is part of the effort. And to me, it's not that I flipped it that's important. It's that it's in the magazine. So, you know, I, I, I try to balance that and make sure that everybody is, is basically is taken care of in there. In a school environment, uh, that's really sort of showing that, you know, you, if, if you have uh, students who are flipping the same things, that you're making sure that you're not deleting articles from the same students all the time, that you're, you know, spreading, you know, spreading it around. If, if that person got deleted last time, then, you know, you'll delete this person next time. It's also where you're placing the articles in the magazine, that you don't want to have it all grouped by uh, one student or one collaborator. You want to really spread it around so that no one opens up the magazine and just sees uh, everything by one person or another. Because again, you're thinking about it, you know, when you're flipping through things, the, the further you have to go into the magazine, the, you know, the, the greater the drop off is, just like with anything else online. So you want to, you know, move things around, mix things up, and make sure that everybody is really um, getting the same sort of uh, credit and support in the magazine. Uh, lastly, the the little things matter, and so that some of the stuff I was just talking about falls under that, such as you know moving things around in the magazine. But you can see here where uh, I'm I'm continuously amazed at how great these women are at collaborating with me, because as you can see, um, very often we're we're all commenting on each other's posts, um, so. It's, it's very important to make sure that you're showing uh, those who are really, you know, just participating so much that you're noticing that work. And it can be a like, it can be a, a, a reflip, it can be a comment. Um, you can, and more than just, you know, a little, uh, you know, word here and there, though in the case of, of this article, Obviously, it's like we didn't have so much to say. It just was something that was really fantastic, so it was very appropriate there. Whereas here, um, it was really more commentary about the incident. So you definitely want to, uh, you know, just make sure that you're showing your collaborators that what they're doing actually matters and that it's noticed. Uh, it, that's really the key to having a quality collaborative effort. Uh, you know, all of these things are all very connected with each other, all five of them. They all sort of flow one into the other. And in a way, there's, there's really only one thing to do to foster a collaborative magazine, and that's to, um, and that's to really make everyone truly a part of it. Um, let me just get back here and, uh, and my mouse is, uh, I think my dog broke my mouse today. So as soon as it's working again, I'll, I'll stop sharing my screen. But what I wanted to do is just to talk a little bit in general about 
the point of um, of collaboration. Now, you know, with students, it can be a little bit more difficult. I know because I have uh, two sons of my own who are in school and do all sorts of projects, some of which are uh, collaborative and some of which are not. And it's very important to make sure that everyone involved knows what their what their work is about and what they are supposed to be doing and to know that uh, here we go uh, there we go hi uh, and to know that uh, that it's it really is a group effort and that what they're doing without what they're doing that it would uh, that there would be something lacking uh, and it's it sounds kind of corny but it is really important to make sure when you have students who are doing it uh, that that they're that they're all participating um, because if someone doesn't and no one sort of gives them a push to participate uh, in the end um, you know in the end they're they're they will fall off and others you know will do will do all the work so. I, I just I, I love having uh, the, the ability to do these collaborative magazines because you get a lot of different perspectives and that's why I think that they're so valuable in an educational uh, effort because the students all start being able to share things that that they're finding and see what their classmates are finding and see how their different uh, thought processes are.